It's Christmas time. This small business is in danger. There's lots of awkward heterosexuality. And I'm here to review them. Welcome to day 10 of the 12 days of Christmas movie reviews. And as a dog lover, I felt it was necessary that I review 12 Pups of Christmas, starring Charlotte Sullivan, Donnie Bowes, and Elizabeth Small. Aaron is a canine therapist in New York City, played by Charlotte Sullivan. You may remember Charlotte Sullivan as a child actor who starred in the new Ghost Rider mysteries. And by you, I mean me, because I'm probably the only kid who watched that show. Well, Erin has a lot going on in her life. She's about to get married to her fiancé, Travis, and she's accepted a new job that will take her across the country to San Francisco to work for a tech company that is developing a product that will allow pet owners to find their lost pets. But Erin's in for a shock on the day that she is supposed to get married at City Hall to Travis, Travis tells her that he's been having an affair with her best friend. Devastated, Erin leaves and heads to San Francisco, where she begins her work at Dog Gone. When arriving at the Dog Gone offices, she is introduced to Carly, who is one of the individuals who hired her. Carly shows her around and introduces her to her brother, the CEO, Martin. And Martin is a pretty boring-seeming fellow who does not like dogs at all. A photo shoot happened and someone at the photo shoot left behind 12 puppies. So as a result, Martin tells Erin she should take the 12 puppies and find homes for them. Carly uh, takes Erin to where her actual home is, which happens to be a house that Carly owns and that several of the employees of Dog Gone live at. She also tells Erin that they will be having a party in her honor that night. At the party, there is a lot of talk of Dog Gone and how it's like a family, which really hits home for Erin and the theme of this movie, as her family is dead. And so she doesn't really have anybody that she's close to, and that's what makes the fiancé best friend affair even that much more heartbreaking. But over the course of this Dog Gone party, based off the way Carly speaks and everyone else there, uh, it gets a little awkward and almost feels like a cult, yet Aaron seems all down with it. It becomes clear from what Carly says to Aaron that they desperately need her help as the company is in financial near bankruptcy, which doesn't really make a lot of sense why a canine therapist would be up with any tech or business knowledge, but nevertheless, they really need her and she makes suggestions to Martin, which can only be considered very basic, and so as a result, Martin does not seem a very capable CEO, and this is a tech company in Silicon Valley. You would think there's a lot of intelligent people in that building, and yet they totally screwed up very basic concepts that a canine therapist pointed out to them. Nevertheless, Martin and Aaron progress, and really the, the rest of the film is devoted to the fact that will Erin help save this company, and will she help herself to this blossoming romance with Martin? Well, where to begin? Every scene in this movie makes no sense at all. It doesn't make much sense to begin with why Erin is a canine therapist hired and is desperately the person who needs to be saving this company. Carly says to Aaron that the reason she brought her to the company was to save the company, but also to fall in love with her brother, which is an insane thing to say to someone else and presume. Martin is a dull idiot, for lack of a better term. The main point here is, in these types of movies, you're hoping for some chemistry among the leads, or some reason to cheer for these people. That's not the case in this movie. Aaron is, seems miserable. Uh, even for a lead in a Christmas movie, even after a devastating, heartbreaking situation, you'd think you'd 
Smile some more, feel happy, be into the Christmas season. Doesn't even feel like Christmas is going on right now. And Martin doesn't help it with really dull, uninteresting acting and dialogue. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, nothing shows that they are falling in love. And yet he says he's falling in love with her. So this movie is just really bad. It doesn't make any sense, and its most offensive part is that it's called The Twelve Pups of Christmas, and the puppies really don't matter at all to the plot. Uh, I guess they come off as being the way that Aaron can show Martin he can truly love dogs, but it's an ineffective plot vehicle. This is the wrong title for the movie. It really should just be called Christmas in Silicon Valley or something stupid like that because they just used the puppies in no way that made you, which is the whole reason you're probably watching the movie, is like, oh, a puppy is in whatever in a Christmas movie. It's not there. So as a dog lover, I was also offended, too. I much rather would have just put on one of those shows on Hulu where dogs just unwrap and tear open gifts under the Christmas tree. It would have been way more entertaining than this movie. So... You know, on a scale of a partridge in a pear tree to 12 drummers drumming, I never thought I would go this low because I did for Christmas Bell and I couldn't even finish this movie. I finished this movie, but it was so bad. It defied any logic. I can't believe an adult wrote this movie. So I give 12 Pups of Christmas a partridge in a pear tree. But hey, we've only got two more days left, and I gotta say, the last two are films I really enjoy, so I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. Join me for day 11, where I'll be reviewing The Christmas Calendar. I gotta make